Merry Christmas, everyone. Awesome. It's like only one week away, right? I'm so excited. I'm so happy that we're here, able to worship together across all our campuses. Here at Waukesha, for example, let me hear you. All right. That was, that was good. That was good. Muskego, let me hear you. All right. Oddly, we had somebody here in Waukesha say, eh. Okay. And then online, come on, let me hear you typing something. All right, yell out in the room. Okay, good. I think I hear like a faint echo. That's awesome. I'm glad we're all here today worshiping as one Fox River family, one community in Christ. This is just such a good thing. And, and bonus material, I love it when the kids sing. All right, just a little bit of permission to brag about my own kids for a second. I remember back when, when they were singing a few years ago. And um, I mean, just like every other parent in the room, right, or online, uh, it's, it's like, man, when my kids sang, it was, it was like they sounded really good. And they looked like extra cute. Okay, so anyways, just, just like hearkening back to that. But hey, as we continue in our wonder series here at Fox River Christian Church and continue to talk about the wonder of Christmas, when I think about my wonder list, like what's what's near the very top, it's this angels. Okay, now now throughout scripture I, I look at angels appearing and then disappearing just in mysteriously mysterious ways if such a thing exists, right? And and they're they're guarding a garden, they're they're uh, agents of God's wrath, like angels show up and, and a lot of people die sometimes, okay? Um, they are deliverers or messengers. The, the word angel actually means messenger, but they're deliverers of good news, all right? They, they're, they're, they provide uh, help to people. They even provide strength. Even the Lord Jesus himself, on a number of occasions, the angel showed up and ministered to him and strengthened him. It's fascinating what angels do. Now, just throughout all of history, Today, um, there are many uh, angels active, all right? Sometimes they're near, sometimes they're distant, but they're active today. And, and just like history, just like today, there are angels active in the Christmas story, which is exactly what we're going to be looking at today. All right, the first Christmas, hear this, was absolutely amazing, all right? Even today, 2,000 years later, we can experience the wonder of Christmas, the wonder when it comes to the birth of Jesus. Now, I know God's got something special for each one of us here today. So with that in mind, with that confidence, with that hope, with that faith, let's go to God together in prayer. All right, Father, we thank you for today. We just pause for a moment and say thank you. We probably don't say that enough if we're honest. Thank you for today. God, help us to hear from you. Help us to understand what you're trying to tell us. And Lord, somehow, some way, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace that Jesus earned for us on the cross, God, help us to be different after having spent time with one another, but also with you. God, I pray that we would be a changed people and that you alone, Lord God, would receive the glory you so deserve. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. All right, let's turn to Luke chapter one. You can turn there in your Bible. You can turn there on your digital device of choice. All right, let's go to Luke chapter one. As we get into Luke chapter one, there's a, a couple things that we gotta just appreciate real quick um, as, as a group, uh, get on the same page with. And, and, and this, this, these are the things, all right? This took place a little over 2,000 years ago. And there was uh, a teenage girl, and she lived in northern Israel. And her name was... Mary, all right? Now, she was a good girl, all right? Really, really good. But at the very same time, and we see this in Luke chapter 1, we're not going to read this part, but in Luke chapter 1, verse 47, Mary admits that she's a sinner and in need of a Savior, which is this interesting thing. How can you be good but be a sinner at the same time, all right? It has everything to do with belief and faith, and we're going to see that play out in the, the more time we spend together today. But anyways, more, more details, right? So Mary, she's a sinner. She knows she needs a Savior, and she was engaged to a man. His name was Joseph. He was a carpenter. He worked with wood, but he also worked with stone. And he, too, was a very good guy, God-fearing man. Anyways, getting back to Mary, she lived at home with her parents still. And then about nine months before the first Christmas, God sends an angel to visit her and to speak with her. And that's where we pick things up, all right? This is Luke chapter 1. We'll start in verse number 28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. See, God sends the angel Gabriel to visit Mary and to, to bring some good news. But when the angel shows up, Mary is greatly troubled. She's greatly confused. 
Remember, let, let's, let's think about this. Why, why would she be so troubled and confused and kind of taken off guard and scared? What, what, what's the reason for that? She's a young teenage girl, okay? Um, she's all alone, apparently all alone in the house. All right? She's never experienced anything like this before. This is crazy. In fact, in all of Israel, it's been about 400 years since anything even close to this has happened. And again, she's a sinner in the presence of a holy sinless angel and she knows from scripture she's like uh this could turn out really really bad all right so so what's i mean let's just kind of camp out there for a minute let's continue to kind of chew on on this if you will um she's right i know i know is it she, she's probably like, if you had to put it, like what were her feelings like? You had to put it in like two categories. We don't have to do that, but, but just for conversation, simplicity, let's do it. I think one of those two categories would be, be like this. Um, she's half in awe. She's half in wonder, all right? She, she's, she's, I mean, just think about it. What do angels look like? I don't know. How, how big, how strong, how powerful, how deep is their voice? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they have a high voice. That would be kind of weird, though. But, like, it's just weird. Like, what is that like? Right? So half of what's going on in her mind and her heart is just like, like, whoa. Okay. And then the other half is definitely like, uh-oh. <laughs> kind of that fear category. Like, uh. But then the, the angel starts talking, right? Let, let's, verse 30, let's, let's continue. But the angel said to her, right? He's reading the room. He's, he, he sees how, uh, he sees the beads of, of sweat like beating up and starting to drip down Mary's forehead. He's, he's noticing all that. He, he noticed the quickening of her pulse and, and the nerves. And she's like, oh, what's about to happen? So anyways, again, verse 30. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his great, 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 great grandfather, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So the angel shows up, right? Mary's kind of like, remember, half wonder, half like freaking out. The angel starts talking, and all of a sudden, she realizes, oh, the angel, he's come to bring blessing, not judgment. Fears relieved. Like, okay, good. I found favor in the in the sight of God. That's that's a good thing. I'm happy about that, right? And then the angel continues to talk, and he's like, Mary, you're gonna become pregnant. And what's more, his name will be Jesus. Now, the name Jesus means God saves, which makes, makes a lot of sense with, with the other information the angel gives, right? His name will be Jesus, and he will be called the Son of God. He is the one that God has been talking about since the very beginning, like way back in Genesis, first book of the Bible, God says something. Genesis 3, 15, he says, hey, there's gonna be someone I send that's gonna crush the head of the serpent. Satan himself is going down. So I'm gonna send the head crusher. He's the one. Mary, the, the child is the one. Your son, my son, he's the one that I've been talking about for so long. Through him, God will save his people from their sins. All right, let's keep reading verse number 34. How will this be? That's an obvious question, right? Mary's kind of like, oh, that's great, but how's this, how's this all gonna work out, right? How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. How's this all gonna, how's this all gonna happen? Well, again, the Holy Spirit He's going to cause a child to be conceived within you. He's going to cause you to become pregnant. And God himself will be the father. And then let's cut down to 38 here real quick. And here's Mary's response. After all of this, right? There's a lot going on, let's be honest. We get, we get a tiny little snippet of this, but, but there's a lot going on. Mary says this. Okay, I'm the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. I mean, all this going on. No doubt, Mary is in awe of the angel. But Mary experiences the wonder of Christmas because she listened to the Lord and she followed him. See, that's the key. 
All right, now let's go to Matthew chapter one. All right, turn backwards in your Bible, just a little bit if you got that, because it's easier on your phone or your iPad or something like that or your computer, right? But, but go backwards, Matthew chapter one. As we get into Matthew chapter one, let's appreciate this. At this point in the story, Matthew chapter one, where we pick things up in a second, the angel had already talked to Mary, like all of that had already happened, all right? Like the chronology is preserved. That had already happened, um, Mary, no doubt, had already spoke to her fiancé, her legally married husband, by the way. They're like, according to law, they were legally married yet uh, at that point. She had told Joseph about this. Now, Bill, how can you be so confident about that? Okay, here, here's, here's why. Because Joseph, he didn't believe her. Okay, Bill, how, how can you be so confident about that? Because Joseph was ready to quietly divorce her. You don't just do that out of thin air. There's got to be a reason. All right? He knows Mary's pregnant. All right? He heard the story. He sees the baby bump. He's like, listen, and he knows he's not the dad. Okay? So he's like, ah, this is, this is tough. My plan is to quietly divorce her. And, and right before he, because you know, he has a plan, but right before he follows through with that plan, God sends an angel just in the nick of time to visit with Joseph and to speak with him. And that's where we pick things up here. Verse number 20, all right? Matthew chapter one, verse 20. Here we go. But after Joseph had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus or God saves because he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22, all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, when Joseph woke up, because he was dreaming, remember? When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and then he gave him the name Jesus. Now listen, I've had some powerful dreams. I'm sure many of us have had powerful dreams. And you're like, man, I, I, I kind of feel like I heard from God there. <laughs> you know. But, but I can say this with confidence. I've never seen an angel in any of them. All right, this is special stuff. This is like, doesn't happen hardly ever. And here's Joseph, like waking up, like, whoa, that was powerful. Okay, can you imagine? I mean, in the dream, similar to when the angel showed up to Mary in the physical in Joseph's dream, what did the angel look like? Some of our dreams could be pretty crazy. I mean, we don't know what the angel looked like. But just imagine, like, there's no answer, by the way. But what did the angel look like in Joseph's dream? Right? Imagine this also. What it must have felt like for Joseph to realize, and this is the significant, I'm on God's radar. Like, whoa, I've really been struggling lately. And God has seen me. He's heard me. And he's intervened. He's met me where I'm at. Because exactly when Joseph needed help, that's exactly when God sent him help in the form of an angel in his dream. Like, are you at a point in your life where you might say, God, I could really, maybe you even said this, right? God, I could really use your help right about now. Maybe it's, maybe it's a tough season of life that you're going in. Things just, one after another, things just aren't going your way. Maybe it's this particular Christmas season. Maybe this year's the first time, but maybe it's a bunch of years in a row. It's just every time because, you know, the loss of a loved one or, or, or a history or trauma, something in the past, and every time Christmas comes around, it's just, man, this season, this Christmas season, is just, it's just re really hard for me. A lot of us are in that category. We know from Scripture that Joseph was a good and godly man which means this whole Mary's pregnant situation, that's something that Joseph would have been talking to God about. He would have been praying to God about. He would have been sharing his feelings. And, and listen, he would have been asking for help. One of the beautiful promises that we see from God all throughout Scripture, all throughout many, 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 many places, is that if you need help and you ask God for help, he will provide it. One of the most famous places in all of God's word where we see that promise is from the very mouth of Jesus in Matthew chapter seven, towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount. He says this in Matthew chapter seven, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. If you need God, allow me in this moment right here, right now, allow me to encourage you 
hey, keep reaching out to him. Listen, you chose to tune in online. You chose to be a part of the online community today. Right? It's not an accident. You made that decision. You chose to be here with a bunch of other people in the physical sense here at one of our campuses. You chose to hear the kids sing some beautiful songs about Jesus. You chose that. You have prayed and you've cried out to God of your own volition, asking him for help. Keep making choices like that. I wanna encourage you. God will continue to give you grace. He's got more grace for you. Now Joseph, no doubt, with this whole situation, he's stressing out. He's like, my wife is pregnant, but again, I know I'm not the dad, all right? Listen, I, 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 I see the way people look at her. I mean, you know those looks. It's like, man, it's just painful just seeing that. Like, I see how people look at her. I see how people talk. I hear how people talk about us. It's not good. But I love this woman. I love her. And, and, and I just, I'm at a place where I just don't know what to do. And thank God for this angel. Because the angel shows up. And he, he lets Joseph know, listen, Mary did nothing wrong. The child within her is of the Holy Spirit. And she, she didn't run around. And she didn't, you know, like, like Mary's been faithful. And so has God. Right? And, and this is where God, through the angel, God's kind of bragging about his kid. He's like, her child, my child, my son, he's the one that the world has been waiting for. He is Jesus, God saves. He is Messiah, the anointed one. He is God in the flesh. God made man. He's the one God is sending to save his people from his sins, or from their sins, rather. And I've chosen you, Joseph, to protect and to provide for him, right? Because he's, he's coming into the world as a little vulnerable baby. Who would have thought? All-powerful God, almighty God would come into the world just, just helpless. Joseph, I've chosen you to protect and to provide for him. I've chosen you to raise him up in a human sense, teach him all about how things work, teach him to be a good and godly man, one who knows about God and follows him just like you do, Joseph. I've, I've chosen you to do that. I've chosen you, Joseph, to love on him like nobody else can. He's only going to have one earthly dad, and I've chosen you. Shout out, by the way, to every parent whose DNA is 100% different than that of their child. Not only is Joseph in awe of the messenger, that much is obvious, right? Like, whoa. But Joseph is also in awe, even more so in awe, of the message itself. I mean, imagine, right? Just wonder about this, the relief that Joseph must have felt. Like, man, I had it all wrong. This was just one big misunderstanding. I was ready to, to leave this relationship before it even got started. And, and now, I, I'm, I'm, instead of feeling that way, I'm feeling like this honor. I'm feeling this privilege. I'm feeling this overwhelming joy just kind of like rising up in me that God chose me, right? In the situation that looks so dark and dim and just messed up. Just when I thought it was over, God is actually calling me to serve him in a really, really special way. And I know it's going to be hard. I mean, raising any child is hard, amen? Right? <laughs> but like, man, that was a little too strong. Okay, but like <laughs> raising any child is hard enough. But, but this, in this unique situation... Um, and it's going to be extra hard. But this much I know, this is Joseph saying, like, this much I know, if God is with me, I, I, I can do this. If God is on my side, I, I, I can do this. If God is calling me to serve him in a particular way, I'm, I'm going to say yes, and I know it's going to work out. It's going to be all right. Joseph, no doubt, was in awe of the angel in his dream. But hear this. He experienced the wonder of Christmas because he listened to the Lord and he decided, I'm gonna follow God. You know, one of the most beautiful things, one of the most beautiful facets of the diamond that is the gospel is this. Because of Jesus, because he lived perfectly in our place, because he died on the cross for our sins, because three days later he rose for our life, because of the gospel, because he defeated sin, death, and the devil, because of the gospel, Jesus made a way for us to serve and for us to worship and for us to follow God anywhere 
and at any time. Listen, Jesus made a way for us, not only to heaven, but a way to worship and follow God anywhere, anytime. You and I can seek God and we can find him in this season and in any season of life. You and I can reach out and receive his help, no matter how dark, no matter how dim life might be, how, may, how, how crushing or painful this season might be. We can reach out to God, no matter what it is, we can reach out to God and receive his help you can experience the wonder of Christmas. This Christmas, in your gift giving, for example. When you give a gift, it can bring someone joy. Isn't that cool to see someone smile? They receive, like, oh, I always wanted these tube socks, Grandma. Okay, like, like, wow. You can give someone the gift, and you can give them joy. All right, somebody who needs help at Christmas time, you can give them the gift of the help they really, really need. Like God's gonna provide for them through you. How cool is that? Think of my gift for Jesus. There, there are kids in Nicaragua that really need medical help, families that need medical help. We can, we can by God's grace, we can be a part of that. We can bless people with that. Across, on the other side of the planet, in Kenya, there's kids. Like We can change the trajectory of their lives, right, just by sponsoring a child and bringing the hope and the help that they need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we can change their life, their family's life. The community can change because of the good work God is doing in and through us, right? So we can experience the wonder of Christmas through gift giving. We can also experience the wonder of Christmas through gift receiving. Every time we receive a gift, is it not an echo of the greatest gift God has ever given in that of his son, right? So I can receive that gift and say, oh God, thank you for reminding me that you gave Jesus, God, and and just that wonder of Christmas can wash over us anew. Isn't that a beautiful thing? We can also experience the wonder of God when it comes to family gatherings or even gathering with friends and and, and, and family, by the way, and and our community here at church for Christmas Eve services. Invite a a boatload of people, all right, to to be here. Fill up your pickup, right? Uh, Don't do that. That's illegal nowadays. It used to be legal when I was a kid. Anyways, so so just bring people, invite them, they can come to church. And and here's what will happen. We can experience the wonder of Christmas here at Christmas Eve services, all right, and at family gatherings is because there's community there, right? And there's love there. And those things, right? right? I mean, check this out. You may, may have never heard this or, or thought of this. It's just a cool little thing. I don't want to get too sidetracked, all right? But, but like in the Trinity, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, there's community there. There's love there. And when we get together and worship Jesus with others, no matter what the setting is, we get to experience just a little bit, a little taste of that right now. We're gonna experience it in fullness in, in a few years, all right? Not, not in any rush, by the way, but, but in a few years, we're gonna experience the fullness of that. But, but man, we get to experience that wonder of Christmas in that special way here and now. That's, what, a, what a gift that is. All right, listen, Mary and Joseph, along with each one of us, certainly, in awe of the angels. But can I show you something? This is, this is like so cool. I've been waiting to share this with you uh, since, since, since the beginning of service, okay? Check this out. The angels... They're in awe of something else. All right, check, check this out. This is 1 Peter chapter 1. There's a bunch of stuff here, so I'm going I'm to like condense it down just for the sake of time. All right, But, but Peter, as he begins his, his letter here, he's talking about salvation. All right, Somebody who is a sinner, like, like me, for example, and, and through faith in Jesus Christ, they receive eternal life, right? And, and, and we call that salvation. So Peter's talking about salvation. And then in verse 10, check this out. Concerning this salvation... The prophets who, like, wrote basically the first half of the Bible here, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, they searched intently and with great care, trying to find out the time and the circumstance to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing. So so they wrote the first half of the Bible, and as they're writing and after they wrote, they're looking at what they wrote, and they're like, okay, we get a little bit of information, but I just can't figure this out. Like, what, what exactly is, is this for? I can't, I can't crack the code on this, all right? Verse number 12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. They weren't able to figure it out. It wasn't for them. It was for us. Those who come after Jesus came. And we get to see a fuller picture we get to appreciate the gospel for what it really is. And all the details that they wrote about, they can fall into place. And it's like, whoa, Jesus is the one that God sent to save his people from their sins. It all makes sense. And check this out. The very last line of verse number 12 from 1 Peter chapter 1. This is fascinating. Check this out. Even angels long to look 
into these things. The angels are in awe of the gospel, looking intensely, and they are wondering. The, the, I mean, just a whole lot of things. Like one of them is, what is it like to be forgiven? Because angels, they don't experience forgiveness, oddly enough, right? Just, just people, just humans, you, you and I, we're the only ones that receive forgiveness. We're the only ones eligible for forgiveness and eternal life in that redemption sense. And they're like, what does it feel like to be forgiven? All right? They're, they're thinking, wow, what a wonderful gift of grace. Oh, what a wonderful Savior Jesus is who came and lived and died and rose and offers this free gift of eternal life, this salvation to people who clearly do not deserve it. Wow. Now what? And they, and they continue to just intensely, just they're longing to look. They're like, man, how's this going to play out? All right, how, how, how's Eileen, how's Cuba, how's Kim, how's Amy? All right, what about Uberboy and Jercade and Journey and Survivor, Fury? All right, how about Nelson? How about Latanya? How about Pastor Bill? I mean, he talks a mean game, but like, how's he going to respond? He's going to talk all day or is he going to actually do something, okay? Like, how's he going to respond? How will men and women respond? How will you respond to the wonderful gift that God has given us in Christmas. For some of us, experiencing that wonder of Christmas has everything to do with taking the next step in our faith, maybe spending more one-on-one -on -one time with God in the word or in prayer. Maybe it has something to do with this, connecting to a serve team at your campus, all right? Maybe you wanna join the North Campus team, all right? And help, help wanted, by the way, I'm just saying, help wanted, okay? Um, maybe it has something to do with this, taking the next step, experiencing the wonder of Christmas, by joining a Pray First small group this January. Maybe it has something to do with this, saying yes to Jesus as you enter into greater levels of giving. Maybe it has something to do with this. I'm gonna experience the wonder of Christmas by taking this next step. I'm gonna share with my family, my friends, my neighbors. I'm gonna share the message of Jesus with them. Now, for others of us, experiencing the wonder of God this Christmas has everything to do with entering into faith for the first time. Listen, there are angels in this room or whatever room you're in and they are ready to rejoice and they are longing to look to see what you are going to do in this very moment. If you believe in Jesus, are you ready to receive him for the first time today? With eyes closed, with all heads bowed, if you are ready to experience the wonder of Christmas by trusting in Jesus to save you, would you let me know right now? Just raise your hand, man. I'm ready to pray that prayer. I'm ready to enter. Thank you, Jesus. I see a bunch of hands. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right, if that's you, online, if that's you, Muskego, if that's you, let's pray. Let's pray together now. I've sinned, Lord, and I need your forgiveness, God. I need your grace. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that three days later, Lord, you rose for my life. I trust in you alone, not myself. I'm trusting in you alone, Lord, to save me and to make me new. I've heard from you, Lord, just like Mary did, just like Joseph did. I've heard from you, Lord, and I wanna follow you. And I receive you, Jesus, as Savior, right here, right now. Thank you. For all of us here, Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for allowing us and inviting us into and and, and God, thank you for allowing us to enter into and experience the wonder of Christmas. God, even today, Holy Spirit, help us to keep thinking about Jesus, that we would continue to be awed by you over and over and over again. Help us to share the love of Jesus and the message of Jesus with others that they might experience your wonder as well. Be glorified, Lord Jesus, in and through your church here at Fox River, we pray. Amen.